Okay, so this is the updated flow, which is going to take Excel rows and write them to a SharePoint list. It's going to add ones that don't exist already, update ones which are already in SharePoint from a previous load, and it's going to remove any rows from the SharePoint list which are not present in the Excel. This is video two, so we're just going to explain the concepts, go through so you see how it hangs together. And then in video three, we're going to actually build this step by step so you can see absolutely where you click the whole way through so that you can reproduce this yourselves if you so wish. Just as a bit of an explainer then, this is my Excel sheet. I'm just uploading three columns uh, in this example and I have created 200 rows of information just to give it uh, a little bit of a volume test. Now here for the actual data one column, uh, it's just a random number that I put in here, just very easy test data, but it also means I can change a bunch of these rows very easily and then do re-updates once again to just kind of stress test my flow. The destination in SharePoint looks like this. So it's a custom list, it's got a title field, and it's got these two columns, data one and data two, which are going to come from the spreadsheet. Just for information, the column names, the way I've built this flow, the column names do not have to be the same. If you saw the previous video about add and update, we needed a unique key, which in that case was the title, to be able to do updates. Uh, we're doing a bit of a workaround in this method, so none of these values actually have to be unique. You could have multiple title columns which were the same value. What you couldn't have, though, is multiple columns where all three items that we're uploading were identical, because that would look like a duplicate. Okay, so how does this work? First off, uh, this is being kicked off with a recurrence, but it needn't be that way, as you know. So to get our Excel rows, we're using this action, list rows present in a table. My Excel sheet happens to be in OneDrive, yours doesn't have to be. One thing which is essential, though, is that you have to be reading the data from a table within the Excel. Go back to our Excel sheet to point out, notice that the data has been formatted as an, as an Excel table, and it has these title columns here, which is telling us what the column names are. So this is going to get a collection of my Excel rows. Then I am just going to create an array, and this is going to hold my Excel keys. Now, it would have been so nice to just put the value in here and put directly the output from this action because that would have created an array for me. Unfortunately, because it's pulling it from Excel, you get lots of extra properties which you don't necessarily want. And that stops the comparison working well, so we can't do it that way. We shall see what we do. Okay, so we've got an apply to each here, and this is where some of the trick takes place. You see, what I'm going to do is take the values which I care about from my Excel spreadsheet, and then I'm going to do a compose. So I'm building something called JSON here, and I'll show you how this is done in the next video. But basically, it's just a particular way to structure some text, and then I'm taking the title, data one, and data two from those Excel results, and then I'm doing this thing called pass JSON, which is then saying, you know, are these things correct? It's kind of building those things into something called an object, and then that's what I'm adding to the array, which I just had. The reason I'm doing it this way is, one, the objects are very clean. It's a very standard way that I can access the different multiple values within there, and I can actually do comparisons really, really quickly. So this is why I've gone for this approach. Next, we want to get our values from SharePoint. So we've got a get items action. And once again, I am just going out and I am looking at that list, which I showed you earlier on, export test 2020. And very similar, I'm creating an array which I can hold those values within, and then I'm doing apply for each. 
I'm doing exactly the same sort of compose that I did earlier on, and I'm doing exactly the same sort of pass that I did earlier on. Now, of course, you can just cut and paste this so-called schema from the earlier example into this one. And again, once again, yep, yeah, I'm building my SharePoint keys array, and this is allowing for easy comparison. Next, I am doing something called an intersection. So I'm creating an array, and that, let's have a look at the expression, is an intersection of my SharePoint keys and my Excel keys. This is effectively an array of all common elements between the SharePoint keys and the Excel keys. And what this is giving me then is a list of the rows which I don't have to touch because there's been no change. The Excel and the SharePoint list are in step for these items. I wish there was an opposite of this one. If we just have a look at the collection expressions here, you see we have intersection there and we have union, which is kind of adding two collections together, two or more, I should say. Intersection shows you just the common elements between the two, and this is useful. I wish there was something called an injunctive union here, which showed you the elements that weren't in common, because that would give me a straight list of things which I had to action, but never mind. Now, I have my list of items which I effectively don't care about, so now I have to go back to my SharePoint collection, which I got earlier on in the flow. I'm not querying SharePoint here. SharePoint has already been queried. This is just the results from that. Once again, I'm composing each row of this into some of these objects so that I can do a very nice comparison between the two. Once again, you'll be able to cut and paste this stuff between these different steps. And then I come along to a condition and I'm saying, if the intersection contains this particular object, if it does, then it's unchanged and that means I don't want to do anything. So there's nothing in the yes condition. If I have not found it there, then that means for SharePoint, this is an update or a delete. And so I'm just coming in and I'm doing a delete on the item from the list. So I'm clearing it out, ready for whatever the new item is. Now, admittedly, because I'm clearing out updates and deletes, you are going to lose the version history for anything that has changed in the SharePoint list. But this is a trade-off, absolutely. It makes the flow much more simple and it negates the need for any unique keys in your data. Then we come along, we want to do the same thing for new and updates. So we're going through then the Excel keys, the collection that we built earlier on. And this time we're saying once again, does the intersection contain this? If it does, then we don't want to take any action. But if it doesn't, it's a new or updated item and therefore we do a SharePoint create item and there we plug our data in. And this is why the column names don't actually need to be the same between the two, because this could be called data 17 as far as I'm concerned, but I know what I'm writing to it here. And this is it. This is going to give you the add, update and delete behavior which you're after. So I already have a list here of various items which have been uploaded. I have my Excel sheet here with 200 rows inside. Now, if I was to just reapply the random number to some of these items, it's effectively going to change the data. So let's do it for about 50, which is a pretty significant bunch of changes. There we go. And now let's run the flow and see how long this takes. So we're running the flow now. Uh, I did a test recently where I changed absolutely all 200 rows. So that meant it had to delete 200 rows and upload 200 rows. And that seems to be about the longest you can make it work. That took 18 minutes for 200 rows. I know it's not super fast. There are probably some tweaks we can make to this to make it run a little faster. Building the Excel keys does seem to be a little bit time consuming, but this is the way it is. When we get to doing the intersection, etc., it really pays off for the investment because the comparison there is super quick. Okay, the flow run is finished. 
Uh, it took longer than expected because actually when I thought I was changing 50 rows in my Excel, I changed all 200. So ha, there you go. Let's just have a look at the timings then. So to build the array of my Excel values, it did take two minutes for 200. Then to build my keys from the array from SharePoint, it took somewhat longer at four minutes. However, my intersection operation was basically instantaneous, which is one of the things that I'm after. And then actually doing those comparisons against the intersection were fairly quick. And then deleting changed items was two minutes. And then adding all those 200 items was five minutes. So 13 minutes in total. It's not so bad for 200 items. Yep, we can see most of these have been changed. And they have the new values. So it's done a lot of adding and updating. And it works, which is what we're after. Okay, next video, we're going to look at how we actually build that flow in detail.